long before Christopher Columbus stepped foot on what would come to be known as the Americas, the expansive territory was inhabited by Native Americans. Throughout the 15th century, the English began arriving in North America, establishing colonies. Some flourished, and some, such as Jamestown, did not. Throughout the 16th and 17th centuries, as more explorers sought to colonize their land, Native Americans responded in various stages, from cooperation to migration to open warfare. However, Native American populations were eventually diminished in size and territory by the end of the 19th century. Cro-Magnon Man, aka anatomically modern humans, the earliest known modern human in France, invaded the Neanderthals range in Western Europe around 45,000 years ago. And within 5,000 years Neanderthals were extinct, which sounds a lot like what happened in the Americas. Just as Native Americans and European colonists coexisted in the Americas, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens also coexisted in France and Spain for at least 1,400 years, according to a recent study published in the journal Scientific Reports. This coexistence between two very different groups of humans probably had a similar history as that of Native Americans and Europeans. There was some early trading and cooperation, some failed attempts at colonization, and a slow and steady attrition, ending in the eventual takeover by the colonists. Interestingly, Europe was the last landmass besides the Americas to be colonized by modern humans, with Australia having already been colonized at least 20,000 years before humans arrived in Europe. But this is understandable, because living on a tropical island in Southeast Asia with friendly Denisovans would be much more enticing than living in the frozen, tundra of Ice Age Europe, while fending off warlike Neanderthals. Between 40,000 and 50,000 years ago, the demographic landscape of Europe was transformed as Neanderthals were replaced by anatomically modern humans, who may have been arriving as refugees from a drought in northern Africa, and disappeared from the fossil record. Recent evidence from Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, and southeastern France indicates that the first anatomically modern humans arrived in Europe by at least 47,000 to 45,000 years ago, and possibly as far as 54,000 years ago. At a continental scale, this would suggest a possible overlap of upwards of 14,000 years between these human species. Yet, little is known about the nature, timing, and specific geographic areas of interaction between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens colonists, during this critical period in human evolutionary history. In the new research, scientists analyzed a dataset of 56 Neanderthal and modern human artifacts, 28 for each group, from 17 archaeological sites across France and northern Spain, as well as an additional 10 Neanderthal specimens from the same region. All samples had been radiocarbon dated using robust modern techniques for greater accuracy. The researchers used optimal linear estimation and Bayesian probability modeling to estimate the date ranges for these samples, and the populations responsible, and infer the earliest and latest dates that these human groups might have been present at the sites. Indeed, the new modeling study predicts the appearance of Homo sapiens and the Proto-Ignatian culture in France and northern Spain at 42,269 to 42,653 years ago, and the extinction of the chattel Peronian culture and regional Neanderthals between 39,894 to 39,798 years ago and 40,870 to 40,457 years ago respectively. This suggests a possible overlap of only 1,400 to 2,800 years between these human groups in the region. The modeling served to fill in missing portions of the archaeological record, which hamper date estimation. Based on this modeling, the authors estimate that Neanderthal artifacts first appeared between 45,343 and 44,248 years ago. The date of Neanderthal extinction in this region based on directly dated Neanderthal remains, was between 40,870 and 40,457 years ago. Modern humans were estimated to first appear between 42,653 and 42,269 years ago in Europe, according to the study. Indeed, Europe is a little peninsula that happens to have a large amount of spectacular archaeology and for much of the last century, 
Archaeologists thought that modern behavior flowered relatively recently, 40,000 years ago, and only after Homo sapiens had pushed into Europe. They based their theory of a creative explosion on evidence like the magnificent cave paintings in France. But some researchers suspected that this theory was a relic of a time when their discipline was ruled by Eurocentrism. Archaeologists, they contended, were simply not looking for earlier creativity in the right places. Was there some fundamental shift in brain wiring or some change in conditions of life? 50,000 years ago was the turning point in human creativity, when modern Homo sapiens arrived in Europe and left the first unambiguous artifacts of abstract and symbolic thought. They were making more advanced tools, burying their dead with ceremony and expressing a new kind of self-awareness with beads and pendants for body ornamentation, and in finely wrought figurines of the female form. As time passed, they projected on cave walls something of their lives and minds in splendid paintings of deer, horses, and wild bulls. On reaching Europe, the rewired modern humans, called the Cro-Magnons, presumably outsmarted the resident Neanderthals, driving them to extinction by 40,000 years ago, and leaving their indelible cultural mark on the land. For millions of years human behavior and anatomy evolved hand in hand. But about 50,000 years ago human creativity and innovation exploded, while anatomical evolution stalled. The sudden appearance of novel tools, weapons and skillfully chiseled art objects indicate a radical change in human behavior. This process continues today. But what sparked this cultural leap remains one of the hottest debates in the modern anthropological sciences. Early humans migrated out of sub-Saharan Africa through what is now Egypt and Israel and spread throughout Europe and Asia. There, these early humans diverged into different subspecies of humans including the Neanderthals in Europe. For many hundreds of thousands of years, Neanderthals were the most advanced human species in Europe until a new wave of anatomically and behaviorally modern humans spread out from Africa and migrated to Europe and Asia. This now widely accepted out of Africa 2 hypothesis is based on the appearance of anatomically and behaviorally modern humans on a small patch in eastern Africa as recently as 50,000 years ago. All of a sudden these early modern humans developed a new repertoire of hunting skills, novel forms of social interaction and a sense of art. They became creative innovators expanding their mental and technical capabilities. These new achievements drove the early modern humans out of Africa to spread over Europe and Asia. Within a short period of only about 5,000 years they supplanted the Neanderthals in Europe, and other non-modern humans in other parts of the world. The cause for the drastic change in behavior in the early modern humans is unknown. But the most plausible explanation for the success of modern humans is a sudden biological change. A fortuitous mutation may have promoted the fully modern brain. As human brains reached today's size hundreds of thousands of years earlier and skull size didn't change drastically, this mutation would have affected cognitive power rather than overall brain structure. For some, the neural mutation hypothesis is the most economical explanation of why anatomy and human behavior drifted apart. Fossilized skulls reveal little about the brain underneath. But a gene mutation may have changed critical neural processes such as speech and language, as shown in recent studies on a specific neuroprotein. Indeed, the abrupt emergence of human culture over a stunningly short period continues to be one of the great enigmas of human evolution. According to another study, titled Reconstructing the Genetic History of Late Neanderthals, cited in the first study, Although it has previously been shown that Neanderthals contributed DNA to modern humans, not much is known about the genetic diversity of Neanderthals or the relationship between late Neanderthal populations, at the time at which their last interactions with early modern humans occurred and before they eventually disappeared. The ability to retrieve DNA from a larger number of Neanderthal individuals has been limited by poor preservation of DNA and contamination of Neanderthal skeletal remains by large amounts of microbial and present-day human DNA. So scientists used hypochlorite treatment of as little as 9 mg of bone or tooth powder to generate between 1 and 2.7-fold genomic coverage of 5 Neanderthals, who lived around 39,000 to 47,000 years ago, thereby doubling the number of Neanderthals for which genome sequences are available. 
genetic similarity among late Neanderthals is well predicted by their geographical location, and comparison to the genome of an older Neanderthal from the Caucasus indicates that a population turnover is likely to have occurred, either in the Caucasus or throughout Europe, towards the end of Neanderthal history. Researchers found that the bulk of Neanderthal gene flow into early modern humans originated from one or more source populations, that diverged from the Neanderthals that were studied here at least 70,000 years ago, but after they split from a previously sequenced Neanderthal from Siberia around 150,000 years ago. Remarkably, although four of the Neanderthals studied post-date the arrival of early modern humans into Europe, researchers do not detect any recent gene flow from early modern humans in their ancestry. Indeed, every colonization in history has ended with the conquerors and conquered interbreeding. The ancestors of the French, the Cro-Magnons, are what could be termed European aboriginals. Their DNA sequences match those of today's Western Europeans, suggesting that Neanderthal hybridization did not occur with the Cro-Magnons. The Cro-Magnon DNA, which comes from maternally inherited mitochondria casts further doubt on the relationship between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnon humans. Mitochondrial DNA alone can't rule out the possibility that Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals bred, but nearly every ancient human skeleton recovered in Europe belongs to either Cro-Magnons or Neanderthals, not the hybrids that would be expected from interbreeding. The mitochondrial DNA sequences of the Neanderthals differed from those of the modern people by between 23 and 28 base pairs per 360 tested, clearly separating them from living populations. But the Cro-Magnon sequences were indistinguishable from modern humans. The Cro-Magnons had sequences that living individuals still have, they have nothing to do with the Neanderthal sequences. According to the study discussed earlier, fossil discoveries suggest that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens may coexisted in Europe for as long as 5,000 to 6,000 years. The reality is that we are unlikely to ever identify the first or last appearance of a species, or cultural tradition in the archaeological and fossil record. Between 40,000 and 50,000 years ago the demographic landscape of Europe was transformed as Neanderthals were replaced by, anatomically modern humans and disappeared from the fossil record. For example, genetic data has shown there to be notable variation in the presence of recent Neanderthal ancestry in early modern humans in Europe. And, although the sample size is limited, it is interesting to note that no European Neanderthals have yet exhibited evidence of a recent modern human ancestor. One possible explanation for this pattern is that, at least in some regions, the first modern humans to colonize Europe may not have directly encountered Neanderthals, as noted earlier. Archaeologically, the first part of this period, the middle to upper Paleolithic transition, is characterized by so-called initial Upper Paleolithic, assemblages which are increasingly interpreted as representing an initial, possibly unsuccessful migration into Europe occurring around 45,000 years ago. Recently published evidence from southeastern France, may extend this initial migration to as far back as 54,000 years ago. At this site, a deciduous molar attributed to Homo sapiens was recovered from an archaeological layer bearing a distinctive stone tool industry, and dating to somewhere between 58 and 51,000 years ago. If confirmed with additional evidence, this would constitute a significant shift in perspective, placing modern humans in far western Europe upwards of 12,000 years earlier than previously thought. Interestingly, there is no evidence of modern human occupation in any region of France for upwards of 12,000 to 14,000 years. Instead, until 42,000 years ago, the archaeological record of France appears to be characterized exclusively by Neanderthal remains and cultural material. The evidence from France may in fact lend strength to the idea that this initial period of modern human presence in Europe consisted primarily of small-scale, unsuccessful migrations without persistent coexistence between incoming modern humans and Neanderthals. Taken together, these observations strengthen the proposition that the initial Upper Paleolithic in this region likely involved a short period of coexistence between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, but the precise nature of this coexistence, however, remains to be resolved. <laughs>